Okay, welcome everybody. I'm very excited to introduce today Unfold Labs and Salesforce. Um, welcome again, everyone, to the B2B Commerce webinar uh, hosted by Unfold Labs and Salesforce. Uh, thank you for taking time out of your day to be here. Let's give a minute or two for any latecomers to join as it looks like we have some people still trying to join. Okay, so we're going to jump right into the agenda here. I want to make sure everyone's in the right webinar today, um, and we'll get right into it here. So after the introductions from myself and Samira from Salesforce, uh, I'm going to be talking a little bit about some high-level landscape, uh, data, trends, some competitive uh, performers that's in the commerce space. I know there's a lot of buzzwords going around with D2C, B2C, B2B, commerce, service, sales, marketing cloud. Um, again, commerce cloud today, B2B, is going to be the lead demo. Also going to be done today. Um, after that, by Samir, we're going to get into a use case, uh, a great use case, and a very successful implementation story from Unfold Labs uh, and a, a large customer in the enterprise space with, with Salesforce support on that as well. Uh, but again, today we are going to be covering a B2B commerce uh, that's native to the Salesforce platform cloud today. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, again, my name is Dominic Nibley from Unfold Labs. Really excited to be here today. Uh, I work under the title Channel Sales Manager. Unfold Labs is a, is a fully vetted ISV value partner of Salesforce.com. Uh, we have been in business uh, just over 17 years now and specialize in helping organizations to maximize their Salesforce CX implementations, uh, technology migrations, and solution development services. Uh, more to come on this later in the presentation. Uh, in my past life, I have worked uh, about 10 or 12 years in the app exchange companies uh, within the Salesforce ecosystem. I have evaluated uh, Salesforce for purchasing partnerships. I have supported it. Uh, Salesforce.com was a customer of mine in my past life, and I am a power user of Trailblazer um, and the system today. So, I am sure anyone on the webinar today, we will have a common story to talk about and share. Uh, and if a question does go over my head, a technical question, I am I have Samira here to support us. Um, speaking of Samira, do you want to do your introductions, Samira? Sure, Dominic. Thank you. So I'm Samira Kashani Ibrahimi. Uh, senior Manager with Solution Engineering Team at Salesforce Commerce Cloud. I've been with Salesforce Commerce for the past six years, selling B2C, B2B Commerce, as well as order management. And I'm super excited today to talk about, um, about our B2B Commerce and how it can bring growth and efficiency to businesses. Thank you, Dominic. Thank you, Samir. Okay, next slide. Thank you. So Unfold Labs. I'm going to give you a little bit of, of what we do and how we do it. Uh, we do a lot. Uh, we have some great use cases and very, very loyal customers today. Um, from implementation services, that would include you know, quality management, that customer journey mapping. We have a strategic, organized structure for success during your technology implementation journey. So we're really excited to partner with the, the best um, in the business, salesforce.com on, on this service. Um, we also have uh, services uh, for integration services as well. Um, this would cover anything from that real time to batch to point to point, any kind of, again, specialties and hiccups and small walls organize, organizations hit. That's where um, Unfold Apps comes in and can support that, that structure and that movement to get forward. Uh, DevOps services is something we also specialize in. Um, anything, again, from change management, from vision control uh, to branch management, thing we, we do and have expertise in a wide range of uh, professionals and services that can handle all your DevOps services uh, as well. Uh, again, left to right services, 
that we cover. We, we cover the big five cloud services of Salesforce. Um, again, from, from, from sales to service to marketing uh, to community, CPQ, uh, Lightning, anything that where it doesn't matter where you are in your organization on your Salesforce journey. Um, Unfold Labs can be your professional partner with early implementations of new cloud services or supporting uh, something you guys already have and hitting, again, those speed bumps and those walls with, with migrations, customization applications, or, or support. Next slide, please. So let's get into some marketplace uh, data stats. Um, learning a lot from Commerce Cloud, this is something that is a growing industry. So I know our audience today is kind of wide uh, and deep in terms of personas and titles. Um, so we're trying to make this as very broad as possible to, to gather in all the data needed to, again, explore this, this cloud service uh, that is native to the Salesforce platform. So left to right, market size in a study that stated in 2022, Seven trillion dollars um, is the market, and uh, by 2030, it is going to rise to 26 trillion, just north of 26 trillion. I mean, we're looking at a huge 20 plus percent growth um, in this industry. Um, the slide, the the graph to your right. Um, I know it's a little bit small but I can read it for you. So from, it's a stat in 2020 to 2022, uh, the, the darker orange is sales in, in billions and the yellow marker at the bottom is growth. So we see 130% growth from 2020 to 2021 and 100% growth, a little north of 100% growth from a jump from 2021 to 2020. Um, again, and this is marketplace enter into digital commerce. So this is becoming more mainstream. It's becoming not 20%, 30% of the business now. We're, we're crossing over 45, 55, 65% of, of marketing and e-commerce um, and online initiative budgets. So it's a very exciting time to be um, on the side of commerce and e-commerce, but also exploring uh, solutions that can bring your business, you know, the ROI and the revenue um, it deserves and needs to be competitive in the space. Um, far right graph, the uh, I'd say sky blue color is portion of all e electronic sales, and the green is portion of all B two B sales. And you can see that the portion of all electronic sales is just exceeding from twenty 2020 twenty to twenty twenty two the portion of B two B sales. But I believe. B2B sales is going to catch up very, very soon. Okay, next slide, please. So here's some B2B commerce uh, data and stats. 52% uh, of B2B buyers say that the buying cycle for new purchases has gotten longer. How long is your customer on your site? How long has it taken them to do drop downs? What kind of product variety do you have? Are people getting stuck in the chuck in the checkout zone? Um, is there issues in your tech stack? Uh, all these things is something that you have to explore and acknowledge to support your new customers as well as your loyal um, old customers. Sixty percent B two B tech buyers are millennials. Think about that. Know your audience now. For example. My wife and I, we consider ourselves senior millennials, right? We're pushing 40 years old, 40 years of age this, this year. Just because it's a 50 or 60 year old company, that doesn't mean that's the generation of buyers that's coming to your site for purchases. So that's something to consider, right? We're in the generation of swiping and scrolling. That might be something that you need to explore on this for your customers in terms of your, your storefront, right? Or your commerce site or your commerce services today. So something to consider, 60% of tech buyers are millennials. Um, and there's a lot of us out there. 43% uh, B2B revenue comes directly from e-commerce and video conferencing. 
That's an interesting stat. Uh, 55% of B2B marketing budgets have been shifted to online initiatives now, right? We're crossing over 50% now. Uh, online initiative executives, personas, different lines of business have a seat at the table now. So it's something that you can bring hardcore facts and data to and now, you know, be heard, right? And have that master seat and get into those closed door meetings where maybe you've been knocking on the doors for years because we now know that this industry is is trending and it is trending very, very quickly. Um, 90% of all first time B2B SaaS purchases require some kind of live support, right? Very important to get the CS portion done. Um, take some time on this, explore this with your organization. What avenues do you have for this kind of live support and customer service? Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so top seven CX trends for B2B commerce. We weren't going to get through this webinar today without talking a little bit about automation and, and AI. Um, I just uh, watched a webinar the other day with Mr. CEO himself from, from Salesforce, and there's amazing companies throughout the world, largest companies you can think of, retail, auto, uh, hospitality, et cetera, when it comes to who is taking advantage of, of AI and automation through Salesforce, for example. Einstein GBT. If you haven't explored that, talk to your Salesforce rep. Get a hold of someone that can walk you through the expertise, some of the machine learning technologies that are available to you today if you are a current Salesforce cloud service user. Um, and this is going to be not a nice to have, but a must have going forward. And Salesforce is on the cutting edge of creating these technologies that will be embedded into the cloud services um, and the commerce world in the very, very near future. Um, Omnichannel support, again, this is where you get your leads, your social, your cases, very important. Make sure you have this under control and um, you adapt to the environment because this is forever going to expand and there's going to be great revenue avenues um, and support that needs to be around as part of your business. Um, next is contextualized real-time pricing, right? This is going to refer to the retailer's ability to manage, uh, adjust prices, facilitate competitive pricing, uh, matching and returns for customers in real time. Uh, moving down the list here. Uh, more companies are moving towards uh, subscription-based models, right? Uh, re, uh, reorders, right? With your large customers, you want them to feel comfortable when they when they come on. Whether it's a mobile experience, an online and offline experience of of the capabilities, right? An example moving down the list for mobile commerce continues to grow. Is you just had a great meeting with a high level executive from a potential large partner. He gets on your website in your lobby online, starts a checkout process, jumps into his limo, gets offline, goes to his mobile, gets into the airport, gets through security, gets back on his mobile, gets into a plane with no online. What does that process look like? Are the UIs the same? Is the user experience, the buyer experience the same? Is that basket saved with products, right? These are something issues that we need to consider with this boomerang workforce, full remote, office days, non-office days. This is the workforce we are involved in today. So it's something to, again, uh, cater to and support. Um, quicker response times, very, very important. 24-7 customer service. Again, this is something that you need to look at your uh, supply chain. Are you having hiccups? Um, is there some some red tape there? Is there some delays there? Um, your knowledge base, right? All these small tech stacks are going to add up to slower checkout lines, uh, dis discomfortable millennial buyers. Remember, um, and if you get and if you bet right on some of these trends, I promise you, uh, the revenue will go up. Cost of goods will go down. 
uh, the customer spend less time into the purchase and the cart to to purchase goods and services, etc. So again, uh, take a note of these. These are very uh, good high level bets to to take within your organization. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, uh, again, this is. Can we make that bigger just a little bit? Can we zoom in? I know it's a little small. Um, this is the Magic Hawk quadrant for from Gardner. Uh, we've all seen this before. Um, if we take this left to right, if you guys can see at the bottom there, um, let me see one second. Make it a little bit bigger on my screen. So the ability to execute on the vertical on the left side. If you go up with your eyes, far right, you see you see Salesforce. Um, Shopify is is crushing it, doing very very well as as a challenger. And then if you look at the bottom right, competitive, excuse me, completeness of vision, far right, uh, you see a company called Commerce Tools that plays very 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 well in the commerce B to C space. We are seeing them pop up more and more in the B to B enterprise world, but but not so much. Uh, we still feel like Salesforce is still the industry leader. Um, and then you see your, your your top four right there, Adobe, that specializes in, in many other um, uh, uh, verticals and fields within within their technologies, but very strong company, um, playing, playing again in the commerce space. You see SAP, that's been around. Um, they're, they're dabbling here and they're catching up. But again, as you see from a visionary to ability to execute, Salesforce is, is two hairs above Adobe. Um, and we're all pretty proud of that. And I can't wait to see the upgraded version of this um, quadrant um, in the quarters to come, in the years to come, because I, I feel like Salesforce is still going to be very, very far, far high to the right, as we wish all of our uh, tech uh, stocks will will soon be. Um, that, I believe, is it for me. Next slide. I'm going to pass the mic over to Samira. All right. Well, thank you for that, Dominic, uh, for that introduction to B2B and all the reasons why everybody should focus on that. And now I'm going to talk about why Salesforce and how Salesforce can make buying experience easier for every customer everywhere. So before we dive into the demo, I do want to highlight some of the primary challenges that companies see, right? You think about your sales reps. They work hard, they generate the pipe, they drive those leads to opportunity to closure. But what happens next, right? There's a lot of manual order entry involved. And those manual entries can potentially lead to errors. You know, pricings may be off here and there. And that also uh, involves some slow quoting. What if the rep is out? What if the rep, rep is changed? What if um, there is some sort of a hiccup in receiving that email or phone call that goes back and forth between the rep and the buyer. Um, and there is no holistic view. You have these siloed sources of leads coming through and they're not captured in a holistic way. The orders aren't placed all through the same system. Again, there, there's this siloed sources of these orders coming in. And so there is no holistic view and forget about personalization, right? The reps are so focused on maintaining these accounts and kind of placing the reorders that they can really focus on upsell or bring in newer customers. And so that's inflexible buying options out there for, for the buyers. Now, imagine that all the processes defined within your organization are customer-centric. And what does that mean? It's all about making the life of the customer easier so that they can get that near-term ROI. Think about a digital first experience that gives them the flexibility to buy the way they want to buy. And regardless of the channel they're buying from, that you have all of that data in a central location and you have easy and analytics available so you know how customer is doing, how, how well they're buying, how happy they are. And it introduces efficiency both to the seller as well as to the buyer. And of course, with all of that, you can introduce personalization to your buyers. Now, Salesforce can help that with our ecosystem we can provide um, the support so that you can have that centralized location. You can have that customer 360 view, whether that's pre-customer acquisition 
all the way to you acquire the customer and you start capturing those orders and servicing your customers. Now, in order to kind of put this in perspective, we're going to talk about a hypothetical customer. And let's say that Alpine Group is a Salesforce customer and they sell nutritional food, nutritional drinks, and um, they their goal is to make sure that their business grows and they introduce efficiency to their sellers and provide that customer 360 view. We have a buyer uh, with NTO or Northern Trail Outfitter who wants to expand their catalog and include some of these nutritional products that Alpine Group provides. So they want to become a buyer of Alpine Group. And their goal is also to be able to um, save time and have complete view of how they're interacting with this particular brand. In order to do that, we're going to introduce two personas. We have Evelyn, a sales rep with Alpine Groups, and her challenges has been that she has had to take orders manually. Oftentimes, wrong price goes out, and she always feels behind. She has to deal with so many different customers placing these orders for them that she doesn't have time to catch up. And on the flip side of it, we have Olivia, who is a buyer with Northern Trail Outfitter, or for short, we call it NTO. And her challenges are, again, she wants to get about her day quickly. She doesn't have time to figure out who's her rep today. Um, she also suffers from lack of visibility. She doesn't know what order she has placed previously, what channel she used to place that order. Um, and she has to manage ordering for multiple stores. So we're going to take a look at how our Salesforce um, B2B commerce and stack of technology really will solve those issues for, for these um, individuals. What we're looking at right now is the Alpine Group B2B storefront. And right now I'm not a logged in user, as you can see. And Alpine Group has a choice to introduce products and make them available for purchase for a guest buyer or lock them down so only those buyers who have an account and an agreement in place can make purchases. So when Olivia first comes to the site, you know, she can see uh, this little sage banner about some of the nutritional facts about products. They're organic, gluten-free, great. She really wants to get a conversation started. She's, she's going to put out her information and submit this form. Now, what's going to happen is that, again, this is all part of the same platform. So we're now stepping into the shoes of um, Evelyn, who's the sales rep. You know, she lives and breathes in Sales Cloud, which is one of the applications natively built on the Lightning platform in Salesforce. And she can monitor her activities, her you know pipeline and everything. And, and so one of the things that she has access to is monitoring leads. So we just submitted leads from the storefront and immediately it's accessible to, um, to Evelyn. And so she can now leverage the sales cloud capabilities, which many people are familiar with, to convert this lead and then take this uh, to an opportunity. Then she qualifies and closes the business. Okay. But what happens next? Right. So this is the topic of our conversation. What happens once Evelyn converts this customer? Do we agree upon a price? We agree upon the products that you know uh, Olivia will have access to, but how can we make Olivia self-sufficient? So what I'm going to introduce is Salesforce Commerce Cloud. But before we get deep into this, for those of you who have seen Salesforce, if you look right here, we have Sales Cloud. And Sales Cloud is one of those native applications built on the Lightning platform. And so is Commerce Cloud. So it's just another application built on that shared data model. Now, if you haven't seen Salesforce or used Salesforce previously, it's important to know that there is this shared data model that all these native apps are built on. And the reason it's important is that I'm going to click on Olivia Buyer's contact. Think about common objects that you need in your sales cloud, in your service, in your commerce, in your order management. That's contact. You know, that's account, for example, Northern Trail Outfitter. That's order. All these common objects are natively available across all these different applications that are natively built on the Lightning platform. And so without implementation, you have that native integration between these applications that introduces synergy. All right. So going back to the homepage, Olivia Buyer and NTO are onboarded as one of the buyers for Alpine Group. And the first step is that we want to make sure they have access to the right pricing and to the right product. And so within this admin page, 
the the admin can very quickly select the storefront and um, here is where all the customers that I want to define their pricing and products are living. So we'll select that. And we can see that there are two different buyer groups. Now, you may have different levels and tiers of pricing as well as types of products that you offer different customers. It could be based on their status. Maybe if they have been buying products from you for 10 years, they are a platinum buyer versus Olivia and NTO. They're just participating in this program. So they are a standard buyer. And as you can see, Northern Trail Outfitter is already highlighted here. It's the new buyer that we just added to the system. And what Buyer Group provides is access to who, that would be Northern Trail Out Outfitter, has access to what products, and that's what we define with our entitlement policies, at what price, and here's the price books that we have. We have discounted price book as well as standard, in what storefronts. All right, so now that we've onboarded Northern Trail Outfitter, we um, have given them pricing and product, access to product and all of that great stuff. I want to bring your attention to Olivia's account information. Now, as, Evel as Olivia starts buying, right, the profile starts getting more and more data loaded into it. And let's say that Evelyn needs to have a conversation. Maybe it's a quarterly business review. Maybe it's just a touch base. Maybe it's an opportunity for upsell. When Olivia or when Evelyn comes to this account, she has access to all the information about Olivia. She can look at her detail. She can look at all the cards that she has created and maybe abandoned. She can look at all the previous orders that she has placed. She can even place an order on behalf of Olivia directly from the system. And this kind of gives her a sense of how loyal or how active Olivia is with Alpine Groups. But this goes beyond that. She can also look at all the service requests. So if there were issues with the product that was received, if there were delays in the shipment, maybe Olivia has created a few cases here and there. And very quickly, Evelyn can come here and take a look at the status of these orders and make sure that this customer is in fact taken care of. And this gives her a sense of how happy Olivia Buyer is. And so with that customer 360 view, she's equipped with all the information to have meaningful conversations with Olivia and other stakeholders at Northern Trail Outfitters so that they can continue to grow the relationship. At the same time, because Olivia is being self-sufficient, because Olivia can place the orders, and we're going to take a look at that in a second, Evelyn has more time to grow her business, not only to upsell additional products to Olivia, but also onboard additional customers. Okay, with that, we're going to go ahead and move to the storefront. So now Olivia is onboarded, and this is the page for the not logged in user. So we're going to go ahead and log in. And I want to I want you to to keep in mind that the experience that we present in the storefront is personalized. So depending on who is the person that's logging in, we can present the appropriate not just pricing and products, but even additional content that's uh, basically focused for that particular uh, customer. So we log in and you can immediately see that the experience is going to be different. And as I scroll down, you can see that there is different buying option even available for Olivia. Now, this is extremely important because our message here is to provide that flexibility and efficiency and give access to the buyers to buy the way they want to buy. And for example, if let's say Olivia typically enters all the um, SKUs, she can go ahead and type that in and let's do this. And as soon as she places uh, to tabs out of it, the product information surfaces, she can add quantity, she can add all the SKUs and be on her way to add this to the cart. But let's think about those retailers where the store associate maybe walks in the aisles and she scans those products that need replenishment. And she kind of does that throughout the week and saves all of that information in a flat file. Maybe on a weekly or every other week basis, she uploads that data into the portal. So as opposed to having to type Every SKU manually, she can go ahead and upload a flat file and get, you know, get it all in there and uh, check out her order, right? So that flexibility absolutely is available. But even more important than that, and Dominic touched on this, is the reordering capability. Because 
There are lots of customers out there that they don't need to change that order every week or every month. They continuously or consistently place the same amount, the same products over and over. And so giving them access to be able to get in here, do what they need to do, and be on their way to the next task really is a win-win for them as well as for you because you're bringing value to the table for that customer. Now, before I select the reorder and get that process kicked off, I wanted to bring your attention up here as well because let's say that Olivia orders for multiple stores and each store, depending on season or location, orders different types of products. Well, you can introduce additional efficiency to the buyer by allowing them to create these specific lists based on, again, location or season or other factors so that when they come to the storefront, they can quickly add all those items without having to search, without having to browse, add them to the cart and be on their way to check it out. Now, none of that says that we should not personalize this experience. You can always leverage personalization to prompt the buyer in the storefront as soon as they log in with the latest and greatest. So if there are new products that they need to be aware of, there are promotions that they need to be aware of, you can put them bold and in their face as soon as they log in, right? But we want to give them access to efficiency as much as possible. And on top of that, if Olivia opens cases, which we were just looking at in Evelyn's dashboard, we can make those also surface here so she can keep track of the status of those cases. Now, I want to take a pause here. Before, when we looked at Evelyn's accounts within Sales Cloud, we saw how that 360 view of the customer gives access to Evelyn so that she can have meaningful conversation with her customers. She knows exactly what's happening to that account we provide the same thing within the storefront to the buyer so that Olivia also has that 360 view of her interactions with the brand in the storefront. And that includes orders placed, cases opened, and any other type of information that makes sense to surface in the storefront related to her interactions with the brand. All right, so let's go back to orders. And I'm going to go ahead and select maybe this one. And once you, you look at the, the detail of this order, you can have information about when this was placed, which, per, which um, buyer placed this order, right? What products were part of it? What was the shipping address? And from there, Olivia can just select reorder, which will add all of these products to her cart. So from there, she can just go check it out in the cart, just make sure everything looks okay. If there are any promotions or things like that, she can actually view them and then check it out. So let's just give it a second. Okay. So now that we're in the cart, as I scroll down, I can see that there is a promotion, right? So Olivia can quickly identify that. Uh, and in addition, if there are any coupons, she can go ahead and enter them um, and from there proceed to checkout where she can select if there's a particular delivery date that's interesting for her, maybe based on the hours of the store, um, if she needs to add an additional address, maybe it's a new store and she wants to just get, you know, order inventory for that store, she can go ahead and add that new store here. She can select her um, shipping information. Um, she can add her credit card or purchase order that she has on files and finish this order. Okay. All right. So with that said, let me just go back here. You know, we were able to introduce efficiency and automation and that customer 360 to both Evelyn and Olivia, because now Evelyn has access to look at everything that she needs, right? Communicate with her customers without having to dig emails up, but all in the same system. The pricing provided is accurate again, because it's system generated. She's not grabbing a PDF from here or there. And she can have meaningful conversations uh, that introduces growth in that business. So Olivia trusts Evelyn and she can upsell products to this new buyer as well as growing her business elsewhere. And on the flip side of it, again, Olivia got everything that she wanted. Um, and so it, it kind of introduces a win-win for both the buyer as well as the rep. Now, if you liked what you saw, we have a lot more interesting stuff in store for you. These days, AI is the name of the game and Salesforce is in the forefront of it. So with Commerce GPT, we're taking the commerce experience to a whole new level for admins, 
for shoppers, and for B2B buyers. So stay tuned and reach out to us with any questions. Thank you, Dominic. Thank you, Samira. That was an amazing demo. Um, I took some notes. I mean, Commerce Cloud is, is in the party. We're, there, we're here to stay. Uh, Real-time KPIs, uh, customer 360 view. Just, just imagine capturing the KPI on the storefront and giving them to your marketing team in real time or getting, giving them to your, to your sales team in real time. I mean, that's just um, optimizing the, the platform to, to its best ability. Um, so that is a true, complete, amazing story of a customer 360. Thank you for that. Um, today, I am going to do another use case from Unfold Labs. This is a large auto manufacturer that specializes in sedans and SUVs. Uh, we're based out of Sweden. Uh, we have handled the division of this of this large auto uh, manufacturing company um, with, uh, with Commerce and BB. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, one more slide, please. And one more slide, please. Thank you. Okay, so the business challenges um, were quite, quite difficult. Um, this company struggled with uh, their mobile, their mobile experience, and it was due to, I believe, a, a a a Salesforce issue that because they were so loyal to Salesforce, they started with a very very early um, uh, version and never really upgraded. So, you know, whoever got involved with this organization from Salesforce, they've been very loyal to, to Salesforce. So that, that's always a good sign. So if they were on a version called classic Salesforce and haven't really upgraded. So we supported them on uh, uh, some mobile limitations. Um, they had another challenge under a security breach uh, during checkout. This was a horrible experience. Uh, it would stop uh, the whole checkout process. Um, so not, not a good scene there. Uh, two different systems for marketing and e-commerce. Uh, not not fun. Uh, delayed again that that buying experience. It, it slowed down uh, the execution of, of products to be delivered. Uh, just just really a hot mess. Uh, no real time inventory. Um, you'd be surprised of organizations that are this large with within the country that have issues with real time inventory. And it's, it amazes me how companies and organizations deal with this or, or not deal with this issue. Um, and the last one, unable to uh, effectively advertise online. Um, brand awareness, um, maybe not a social strategy in place thus far. So we, we kind of tackled all this uh, one step at a time. Next slide, please. Thank you. Um, so our, our implementation, solution was as fo is as follows so what we did is we we started out by creating and building a a ui <clears throat> ux solution that really supported salesforce for the mobile e-commerce um some people think it's it's an easy fix or turnkey it's, it's really not we want that that mobile tablet experience to be you know better than sometimes you write your, your your browser and and your base computer support um implemented uh, some, some security around reCAPTCHA, right, for security purposes. Um, we integrated, you know, a plug-in uh, HubSpot um, with the B2B commerce platform. And, and this really jump-started their, their lead generation to have a platform um, in place for their customers and their, their products um, that they needed to promote. Um, we integrated uh, a service called FileMaker. That's an amazing product. Um, and Salesforce e-commerce for real-time inventory. This was the game changer for them. Um, they vetted a couple different services. We made our recommendations and then we supported their choice to move forward with this. Um, the company now in this parts division of this large auto manufacturer um, can now see in real time their inventory. Um, and they're very happy with us and very loyal to us because of that. Um, we've implemented Google Ad Merchant and integrated with 
genomics. Um, this was, again, something that we both collaborated on, worked night in, night out on this, and made this something, a, a super success for this organization that has really um, patted us on the back and give us some really good um, compliments on the, on the service. Um, and then inventory management, right? This is something that, that's pretty much built into um, the, the commerce platform, the B2B commerce platform, but we've, uh, we've created some custom applications and supported this throughout the um, implementation journey. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you. Um, the results, right? We, we increased revenue uh, with the mobile commerce, right? People are being more comfortable. It's more, uh, the UI is more user-friendly, less time in checkout, uh, better availability of, of drop downs. Um, we have those reoccurring customers for reorders, like Samira mentioned, very, very important to, to capture not only your loyal customers, but capture, again, your new buyers based on this experience and buying experience. Um, we secured customer payment data, very important, um, safe and uh, increased lead generation. This kind of happens organically when you have a great system in place and a good team uh, that can support it. Uh, we've improved the bottom line uh, with real-time inventory. Again, they they placed huge bets, uh, this auto manufacturer, on this portion of their business. And that's something that uh, B2B commerce can do and do very, very well. Um, and we increased the brand awareness and sales uh, because of some of the customizations that we did for their landing page and their storefront. And this large manufacturer is very happy with us. And we look forward to uh, expanding not only the Salesforce practices, but the unfold practices as well in the near future. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so why Unfold Labs? Um, we are a very diverse, uh, far and wide uh, group of people, very happy to be here. Um, open door policy, really excited when we get new partnerships and, and expand our current customer base. Um, we focus on, on cloud and mobility. Those are our expertises, as well as uh, the services that we presented earlier. Um, we have a very, again, robust background. Um, we're great thinkers. Uh, we're very innovative. Um, our, our CEOs are very much two feet in and very involved. You might even hear a couple, couple jokes during our meetings. We're very much um, willing to help. We have a very uh, thin, strong team, but you do get a whole large team to move mountains and and create that uh, go live time, you know, on the calendar and work backwards from that. We have the strategic formula for implementations, early implementations strategy that is just bulletproof that we work well. And it really is a partnership of a two way road of how we, we get things done and support the customers with any speed bumps and walls that may come up during that that installed journey. Uh, of your of your new applications and services. Um, love our leadership. And again, we have experience. We play very, very well in the large and enterprise space. So any um, organization that um, needs to consider a professional service um, company, we're, we're really excited to, to hear from you um, and uh, learn more about what, what, what you need and when you need it. Um, next slide, please. I want to, again, thank all the attendees, Samira and uh, Salesforce for co-sponsoring today's webinar on e-commerce. Hopefully, we all learned a little bit about the trends, the data. We saw it live today. Um, very, very exciting stuff. The demo itself. Um, I'm really excited to see what Salesforce brings to the table in terms of some of the, the AI, the automation, and the Einstein. Um, if, if you're in this field today, please reach out to your, your SFDC rep and, and figure out what the next steps are and what you can learn. Let's open it up for some Q&A. Is there any questions that have popped up, team? Hey, Dominic. Uh, this is Renee, everybody. Um, okay, looks like we have two questions. Okay, let's see. The first one is, how do you see AI impacting B2B commerce in the near future? Great, great. Yeah, we covered a little bit of this. Um, AI is is really being used in many different applications um, throughout organizations to provide a better user experience. Um, over time, I believe AI will learn the customer's preferences quickly 
and, and easily and makes and then it's going to make those recommendations of, of other products that that might be of interest. Um, AI can also provide general recommendations um, based on behavior of, of other users. Um, I believe it's a very powerful engine and it's not going anywhere. So more to come on that. OK, great. Um, thanks, Dominic. OK, last question. Uh, what factors do you think are pushing so many enterprise companies to roll out B2B commerce? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, we we often think of e-commerce as a, like a B2C experience, and that's something we really didn't touch on today, but we, we all know what, what that is. Um, we're, we're all used to buying most anything we need online, right? We, we feel comfortable. Uh, it's kind of our generation where we're, we're very comfortable doing that. Um, but there's no reason why e-commerce can't be used for, for commercial transactions as well. Uh, e-commerce can be used to purchase items, to restock warehouses, just as easy as it can be used to, to buy razor blades, right, online. Um, it's really knowing your audience, I think, and knowing your buyer. Some of the, the facts and statistics that, that we went over today, I think, very, very important for organizations to, to bet on. Well, I think that's it. Again, I want to thank Samira again and Salesforce for co-sponsoring our Unfold Labs uh, B2B commerce webinar today. I'll give everyone about 10 minutes left in the hour. Uh, if you guys would like to reach out, here's my contact information. If you have any one-off questions, be happy to reach out to you on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Thank you. Have a great day.